coming up. I put the five upside down. One job, Stratton. One job. We make spaghetti alla silicone. Insane. Just insane. Important tools. Here it is. I'm trying to flush. And we race, apparently. Wanna race, bro? Huh? Cameraman, sound man, director. The producer is all coked up. But other than that, are we ready? Okay, good. Hello and welcome to M5 39 Restorations and to my beloved E39 M5. This is my favorite car and the best car in the world. Don't argue, it just is. This is a car that was never as a project on the channel and that's because I fixed it up long before I started this talk to myself for a gig. I imported it from Italy about four years ago, did a lot of work on it and since then just drove the crap out of it. I think I bought it with around 165 or 170. Now it's at 208,000 kilometers. Recently we took it on a very big road trip uh, to Italy, France. 3,000 kilometers in 11 days. The car just drives wonderfully. Anyway, the last time I did the video on it was last year actually, around this time. We did the annual service and we got it up to 300 kilometers per hour on the Autobahn and that video was actually quite popular, which is awesome to see e39 getting the love that it deserves now we're gonna do another oil change because it's due and then we're gonna change the water pump and do a little bit of work on the suspension but more on that once the car is in you know my girlfriend says that i love this car more than i love her which is not true but i do love this car very much let's get the tower on wheels out of here where did i put the key Sounds good. I hope you like the X5. This car has virtually no extra options. Only one, which is double glazing windows. And it also hasn't got one that's really important. Stupid sunroof. It's a slick top, which means it's rather quiet on the Autobahn. That and the windows really make it nice to drive at higher speeds. So what are we doing today? Gonna kick off with an oil change since the car is still nice and toasty. Then we have to replace the water pump, which I already replaced, I think around 30,000 kilometers ago as part of preventive maintenance. But recently it started making some manly sounds. You know, the type of sounds that I make. Not very good for water pump. <laughs> then we're gonna do the thrust control arms. I actually have monoballs from German Auto Solutions from the US and I'm pretty excited to try those out. And then we're gonna go and drive fast on the Autobahn. How does that sound? Also, last time I made the video on this car, it had a squeaking noise upon startup for like a second or two. That turned out to be the starter. I replaced it way back then and that noise is completely gone. This is a different type of noise. It's like having a little birdie under your hood. It's quite annoying. You gotta get rid of it. I love Le Mans blue paint. It's gorgeous. Rolling the cart. Oh yeah, there's another one up there that I'm yet to fix and restore. The nurse is on vacation, so I gotta roll my own cart now. By the way, how do you like my new banners? They really spruce up the place. Pull out the dip. Undo the old filter cap so oil can drain from the old filter housing down into the pan. Gonna inspect it for alien life a bit later once it cools down. For now, let's go underneath and drain the oil. Sorry about the excessive noise, but there's nothing I can do about that. They gotta do their own thing. I gotta do mine. Whoopsie daisy. The f I was about to say no oil leaks, but as you can see, we do have one. This is from the lower oil pan gasket. And last time I was under here, this wasn't leaking. I just called a local parts store. They're gonna have the gasket in stock tomorrow at 11. So we'll go ahead and drop the oil, the pan, see what's inside. And then tomorrow on the way here, I'll pick it up. And for going back home, I'll take D60. Got my canister here ready to collect the oil. I do that every oil change and I send it to Blackstone Labs in the US. And so far I had nothing but great results. This last oil change, I used 5W50, as I said in the previous video, I quite like it. Uh, but I also used Liquid Moly Motor Protect and oil additive, so the oil is going to be a bit gray. But that's totally normal when you use those additives.
and collect. While that is draining, I'm gonna inspect the filter. Clean as always. First things first, we gotta clean around the perimeter. So I'm gonna crack them loose all by hand first. So slacking these two. Oh, it's already coming out. Nice. Let's take it to the table. This engine got oil changes at least for me every five to six thousand kilometers. Doesn't look too bad, but it's an engine with two hundred and eight thousand kilometers. So a bit varnishy here and there. Let's first inspect the oil pan and then we're gonna drop the pickup tube because that's where you usually find time chain guys remains. All right, let's see. That appears to be clean, not even sludgy. The filter is also clean. So nothing here. Brace yourself for a splash and dash. Yep. Okay, this time I didn't ruin my t-shirt. Let's see, this is where we on Project Hovde found timing chain guides. All right. No guides, just RTV from the guy who did the valve cover gasket. There's like goop all over the place. I can see it from the outside when they replaced the valve cover gasket in Italy. And this right here is why you never ever use a crazy big bead of sealant because you get this, you get silicone. And if you don't have a pickup tube on the oil pump, which you will have, but it can clog really important passages in the engine and then engine goes boom. This is actually quite a lot of gasket material here i mean this is ridiculous i don't know why they felt the need to use this much so kind of glad i did this but good news absolutely no signs of failing timing chain guides no plastic or anything so that's why when i have to use uh Reinsel seal or whatever i use a very thin layer i usually smear it around with my finger it does look kind of ugly but it's actually better because that way i can control how much it's going to squeeze on the outside actually you know what I'm gonna order valve cover gaskets now as well so we can take care of that. So this car has original 208,000 kilometers. It had regular oil changes most of its life. I know it did with me and the previous family that owned it in Italy. They were a bit crazy about it, so they really kept it clean and they had the car since like 2005. And another key why it doesn't have broken timing chain guides, I replaced the timing chain tensioner when I bought the car immediately and you just run the car properly drive it use it warm it up and then beat on it i mean they're made to be driven hard but as long as you warm it up and you use good oil your timing chain guides are going to last on top of that another big factor is the usage of the car if you store it all the time and you drive it very little chances of guides going bad are bigger because the guides and everything is dry and then you start it and until the oil starts flowing it's just banging on the guides that's what we had here this car has well i don't remember 230,000 kilometers something around that and we, have, and we found small pieces of the timing chain guides in the old pickup tube. But this is a healthy boy, a very, very healthy boy. I'm actually going to put back the old pan. I don't want the engine to be open while we're waiting on the new gasket. In the meantime, we're gonna go up top and start unbolting stuff there. Just finished devouring a croissant and ordering all of the parts. So let's continue. you one of those the maths are actually brand new well a couple of years old let's take the boxes out as well completely remove the fan clutch As part of preventive maintenance, I overhauled the entire cooling system minus the radiator because it looks good and it's not leaking. But I did brand new original pump, thermostat and all of the hoses and everything else is okay apart 
the pump. I'll post the screenshot when I replaced it exactly. I want to say 2018 at 170 something thousand kilometers. And it was extremely expensive back then. I think I paid like 500 euro or something like that. My friend Z helped me get this one through the dealer. So pretty disappointing to see it go bad that early. Anyway, let's drain the coolant. Pop the lower rat hose. Disconnect that. And the coolant sensor. And I'll let it pee. This hose is always a pain. Every time. As Wicked would say. This expansion tank hose. Save the little covers. Take the fan shroud out. Now we're gonna start removing the plenum, which you don't have to do if you're just replacing the water pump or thermostat, but since we're doing the valve covers, it needs to come off. Get this hose quickly out of the way as well. Get the cabin air filters out. Velocity stacks. So we're gonna mark them. These rubber hoses here are replaced when I got the car. What a beautiful engine this is. Really is. Now we're gonna take the belt off. It's not squeaking now, I think only when the, when the car is warm. I actually have a video of it making the noise. Bastard. What kind of noise is that? And the rest of it, good, but we will refresh this. The alternator I rebuilt as well, the bearings were shot. Let's do the AC belt as well. AC clutch bearing is good. Now I'm gonna remove the thermostat and there's actually a small mesh filter in here that I replaced also a long, long time ago. And it wasn't that dirty, if memory serves me right. And it's the part number that you can find on E46 M3. Real OEM doesn't show it anywhere. Gonna remove this Vanos line here and we're actually going to replace it as well. I've seen them burst on a few occasions. Pulley. It's pretty crazy when I think about it. Back then, I was doing this in an underground parking garage where I parked this car, which wasn't even near my home, and it was horrible. Cars all over the place, exhaust fumes and stuff, and I was working on it. Did the entire suspension on it there as well. Promised myself I'm never gonna do that again. It's just not good for your health. But I worked pretty much everywhere. Driveways, outside in the courtyards. In order to get to all of the water pump bolts, we need to remove vibration dumper. So first I'm gonna remove all of these pulleys, get them out of the way. The car is out of the gear and now we're gonna rotate the engine until the hole on the vibration dumper lines up with this bracket here. Then we can use our tool, or if you don't have it, you can use eight mil drill bit. This is the tool that I have from the N62 timing kit. Just lock it in place. Dropped it, but it's out. 
To remove the vibration damper, we have four e-torx bolts, and these are one-time use bolts. They're stretch bolts, so we don't need to replace them. Looks like we have a weeping front crank seal, so I want to replace that as well. Just placed an order, because I don't want any leaks on this car. Now I can remove the water pump. Before we go any further, we gotta clean all of this here. Now I'm gonna clean up the gasket surface with some scotch brite. That's now nice and clean. Now that everything is clean, we can start pulling out the crank seal. And first I'm gonna measure how far it goes in. 0.8 millimeters. So we need to remove the seal without damaging the timing cover or the crankshaft. And the best way to do that is to use self-tapping screws. Start one here in the middle of the seal, another one here as well, and then pull it out with pliers. Should work, I've done it in the past. Start a hole. So I'm gonna try and drill a small hole there. Start it, now go by hand. That's how that looks like. <clears throat> it's coming out. So here's what I did. White grip, pry bar, lean it here, and then push the seal out. There it is. Removed without damaging anything. That is the key. Here you can see where the screws went, right through the middle of the seal, not touching anything important. Now, to install the brand new seal, there's a special tool, which I naturally don't have. You can try to tap it into place, but there's not a lot of room to swing there, and we need to do that evenly. So I made my own. I went to the software store and I bought this PVC pipe. This is 64 millimeters in diameter and perfect for this seal. I also bought a plunger, a toilet plunger. And you might think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Here it is. I'm trying to flush a very big turd that I have. It's called Project Chicago. So far it's not working out, but I'll let you know how that goes. Anyway, piece of wood, drill the holes using the old bolts that goes there and slowly drive it in. I got inspiration for this from M5 board, long live forums. Don't let them die, they're incredible resource of information. I love them. Just wish I had more time to be active on there as well. So the pipe fits perfectly. But let me see if I need to shorten it. Fresh oil. We want to lube up the surface, otherwise we can tear the seal very easily. Let's see if we can start it by hand. Now you're gonna deploy our high-tech tool. So I'm gonna use the old seal to start it. My pipe is too long. And I'll slowly jump from one side to another and install it. I want to check the progress. We don't want to push it too much in. Think a little bit more. I'm going to switch to the pipe now. All right, I'm going to measure now. I think it needs to go a little bit more in. 0 0.1. The left side is perfect. 0 0.8 all around. So sitting perfectly flush. And that's the front crank seal, lovely and smoothly installed. Next, we're gonna replace the PCV valves, these hoses here, and remove this pipe here and replace the O-ring on the bottom. First vacuuming. D. 
dig out the o-ring. There's a washer and an o-ring. We're also going to do the old dipstick o-ring just because we are here. It's the thing that holds it. Question, can it even come out now? It's out. Another washer and the o-ring. We have a new oil separator, hoses and o-rings. So let's start cleaning stuff up. It's nice and clean. Install first the washer, then a brand new o-ring. Now small o-rings for the old dipstick. The one is actually cracked. It's o-rings installed. Bit of oil for them as well. And that's the old dipstick done. Snap oversteer. The pipe is thoroughly clean as well. All right, we are ready to reinstall. Time to clean up first the old dipstick, which I can't even see. It's a good thing we still need to do the lower oil pan because all of the stuff that I'm cleaning is just dropping right into the oil pan. Dipstick going back in with plenty of lubrication. It's gonna be tricky. Put the o-ring on the bottom. And now we can start pushing in. Okay. There it is. Now the plate. Start the nut. Drop the nut. Spend 20 minutes searching for it. Do it again. Perfect. Do up the mashuga nut. Lovely. Here's the old water pump and this is the original pump that I bought directly from the dealer that shamelessly lasted only around 30,000 kilometers. Really disappointed in that. This is OE part, same as this one, just original equipment with B&W logo scraped off. Geba makes these pumps for B&W. This was around 322 euros. I think I paid for this one back then around 500. Brand new gasket, gotta find the o-ring for the pump over there and let's install it. Remove the old o-ring, clean all this. Brand new o-ring, silicone spray, brand new gasket. Hopefully this one lasts longer. Don't feel like changing this water pump every 30,000 kilometers. It's a bit too much. Vibration dumper going back in and there is a pin on the crank that you need to align with this hole here. Makes it rather easy to install. Brand new bolts going in. The torque for these bolts is 16 millimeters and then 50 degree angle twice. I'm gonna get my digital torque wrench. Here you go, first round. Good. The second round is going to be too much for my digital torque wrench, too much torque, so we're gonna go the old school way. Fifty. And that's fifty degree angle twice. Now you're gonna focus on the thermostat housing. There's a seal inside that I want to replace. That's the seal that's located inside. It looks pretty flat and I want to replace it. So this is the tip that I saw in the 39 m 5 owners group. Jet Pineda, I think, posted it. So a nut, pick, and it should come out easily. There it is. So you put a nut in there, pick, and just pry it up. Real easy. Really good tip. Thank you very much, Jed. Join me in my Vixen Surface Treatments vapor blasting cabinet. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about.
That should do it. Now that's beautiful. Let's install the new seal. That should fit nicely. Let's slowly bang it in. That's nicely installed and fully seated. Now let's talk about the thermostat. The original thermostat for E39M5 opens at 79 degrees Celsius. Now that's pretty low, but whenever I drive this car on the Autobahn, I drive it hard. So the coolant temp gauge, it's always in the middle. But whenever I'm driving outside Germany, for example, on my road trip, I was driving in France, cruising on 130 kilometers per hour. It was around 10 degrees Celsius outside. The car was running rather cool because it wasn't under any heavy load. Don't like that, so I'm gonna try this 82 degrees Celsius thermostat from Gates. It's listed for E39M5, and unfortunately it's not plug and play because the design is different. This is the original bare one, and as you can see, it has this nice rubber gasket on the top and the bottom. This one doesn't, and because the design is different, you can transfer this here. Instead, we're gonna use Reinzo seal, a thin layer here, so it seals, otherwise it's gonna leak, and then a little bit here, and that's gonna hold. This is really, really good stuff. I have really good experience with it. So I'm just confident in this and feeling comfortable using it. So let's do that. First, we're gonna replace the O-rings here. O-rings, donde estas? Silicon spray. So again, thin layer. That, wipe off the excess. Now we're gonna apply silicone on the thermostat as well so it slides in easier. Very good. Bit of rinse of seal on the water pump as well. So with RTV, the key is not to use too much. Lubed up O-rings. it home. Temperature sensor with a new washer. Clean banjo bolt with fresh crush washers. Brand new Venus line. As I said, I've seen cases where this line pops, you lose oil pressure, you get oil everywhere. So as part of preventive maintenance, we're gonna replace this one as well. Wasn't that expensive. Brand new pulleys and belts. I did this as well when I bought the car, but this is cheap enough to keep it nice and fresh. Water pump pulley. Tighten these a little bit more. Now we're gonna get the front end up in the air so I can remove the wheels and drop them off at the tire shop tomorrow morning so they can replace the tires. Style 65 wheels, they're beautiful, aren't they? A few years ago, I had them refinished back to original chrome shadow and they look spectacular. And then about two years ago, I wanna say, the rear right one was scratched by a tire shop, so I had to send it back to Poland to get it refinished. And now all four of them are perfect. Not even a tiny scratch anywhere. I kept them very, very clean. And this is why I wanna take them to a tire shop and have them do this because the other day I tried to do that over there with my machines, some 18 inch tires. With a friend, it took us 40 minutes and it was incredibly difficult. So there's no way I can do this and not scratch the rims. So I'm gonna let the tire shop do that. These are Falcon tires that the previous owner installed about five years ago. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're getting a bit old and worn. So I wanna refresh them. And I'm no longer working with Falcon tires, not because they're bad tires or anything like that. The lady that was dealing with me just stopped replying to my email, so whatever. I have Michelin Pilot Sport 4 here. 
and this is gonna match what's in the back. But these tires, honestly, they've done everything I asked from them. They've done high speed runs. In wet, they're really good. When you're in back rows, they're really good. I mean, I had no issues with them whatsoever. And the rear ones lasted about a long time, I wanna say 20, 25,000 kilometers, which is a lot for V8 with 400 horsepower. And these still have thread left, but as I said, getting a bit old and I just wanna match all four tires. Anyway, note their condition. And let's see if I'm gonna get them back without any scratches. All right, I dropped off the wheels and now we're gonna do the valve covers. Man, they used RTV everywhere. So I disconnected the battery because we're gonna be messing around with grounds here. Original Bremi coils from July 2000. That was quality back then. Now I can start loosening nuts. Where's my tiny screwdriver? Donde esta mi favorito? I can't find my tiny screwdriver. It's my favorite. It's the cheapest screwdriver I ever bought. One euro. Please come back. Oh, there it is. Paid one euro for it in Euro Shop. I love this thing. Okay, so the bolt's removed. It looks like it's hermetically sealed. Man, they used RTV all the way around. Everywhere. That's why the old pickup was full. <clears throat> Look at that. Gobs of sealant everywhere. How are we gonna clean this? It's been a while since I've seen this much RTV used on a valve cover gasket. Camshafts are looking good. A bit warnishy. But again, I didn't own this car all my life. And we have RTV just everywhere. I mean, look at that there. And there. So I'll need to clean all of that thoroughly. Time to scrape. How much RTV? All of it. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I have a fresh carbon fiber and Victor Reins gasket remover. Why is that? Why are you attacking me? I can highly recommend this stuff. It's very good. Just apply it, let it sit for a little bit, and the sealant is just gonna come off very easily. Now we're gonna replace the spark plugs since we have more space without the wall cover. Looking good, firing nicely. New spark plugs. All of this came from one wall cover gasket. And I've seen people use RTV all over the place when they do wall cover gaskets, but I've never seen someone use this much. This is Half a tube, maybe even full tube. Insane, just insane. Few zip ties here and there to keep the gasket in place. Now I'm gonna prep the bolts. It's good stuff. Poisonous chemical, but good stuff. Got new grommets as well. Oh yeah, at least they didn't use super glue or Gorilla Glue like they did on Project Dubai. And with that, we are ready to reinstall the valve cover. And now per the repair manual, we're gonna apply a thin bead of RTV where the cylinder head meets the cover, like that, and also on the half moons in the back. All right, now get a mirror and verify that it's seated in the back. Good, and double good. Do it around here as well. Now cut and remove the zip ties. Just pull them out. There is no torque spec in the repair manual for this, so just go from inside to out in crisscross pattern, and you're gonna feel when the bolt bottoms out. Stop there, and that'll do it. See, that bottomed out there. Don't go more than that. 
And that's it. And now we got to copy paste the same on bank two. And on first glance, it doesn't look like they used a ton of RTV here, but let's find out. Thankfully, whoever did the valve cover gasket on that side didn't do it here. There is no RTV here at all. Torque time. Done. And now the ignition coils. These are the original E39 M5 ignition coils made by Bremi, made in Germany. Extremely good quality. I mean, these lasted over 20 years and over 200,000 kilometers. However, Bremi, it's no longer made in Germany. It's made in China. And I'm not mocking anybody. Everything nowadays is made in China. Unfortunately, the quality is simply not there. You can buy a brand new Bremi coils, compare them to the old ones, and you can see that they're not even in the same league. So when it comes to ignition coils, whenever possible, I prefer to use Bosch coils. They're made in Slovenia and they're really good quality and I have very good experience with them. However, on S62 on cylinder one and five, because these have a very bulky head, you can't do up this nut here because this part of the coil is hitting the stud. So I'm gonna show you now how we're gonna install them. And when it comes to E39 M5 coils, there's nothing special about them. E39 520i uses the exact same coils. And also I'm not gonna throw the old ones away. I'm gonna save them. Cylinder number one, and because the coil is too wide, it's hitting the wall cover there and you can't do up the bottom nut. So I simply filed off the corner here and this is just plastic, nothing important or structural. And now it fits like a glove. You have to do the same thing on cylinder number five over there and the rest of them fit totally fine. That is a nice tip if you want to run better quality coils than Bremi or whatever else. I personally think that Bosch makes the best quality coils nowadays. Use some silicone spray to clean the gasket here. Don't want to use brake cleaner on this. Very clean intake plan, I'm going back in and I also replaced rubber lines on the back. They didn't look very good. New grommets. A little bit of persuasion. Fully seated. Torque spec is 10 unimeters and first we're gonna do the inner bolts and then the outer ones. Velocity stacks. No torque spec for these, so just do them up lightly. Brand new gasket. Inside to out. Brand new cabin air filters. Nice. Now we're gonna button up the oil pan. Since the oil pan is aluminum, we can chuck it into the vapor blasting cabinet. So I'm gonna put back the old gasket because I don't wanna blast the machine surface. All right, time to blast.
Rain your gasket. Do you know what we need to deploy now? Of course you do. Zip ties. Goes back the old pickup. So we're going to use thread sealer on the bolts so it doesn't leak through the threads of the bolts. Not locker, sealer. Done. Oil level sensor going back in with a brand new gasket. Pre-lube the oil filter. Dump it in. Maple syrup time and we are going with 5W50 like the last time. I said I'm gonna run that for a while, see how I like it. Turns out I like it a lot. It's quicker to warm up in cold weather. The engine is overall working nicer, it revs easier, the Vanos is working better because the oil is thinner. The only downside so far, it consumes a bit more oil when you drive it really hard. And I had that with every single E39 M5, even the low mileage ones. When you drive it fast on the Autobahn, it just eats a bit of oil. So nothing new there. And on this particular engine, with every oil change, I sent an oil sample to Blackstone Labs in the US for analysis. And as far as the wear metals and all of that spec sheet stuff goes, there's no change whatsoever compared to 10W60. So I'm gonna continue running that. And obviously I'm not forcing anybody's opinion. Use whatever you want. For me, this works. There's nothing wrong with 10W60 either, but I live in Germany where the weather is a bit colder. So I like to run thinner oil. Drink up. I'm using the same stuff in D60 and 5 and good experience there as well. I should add that when you drive it slower like normal speeds 120 130 it pretty much doesn't consume any oil only when i drive it hard another also i change oil on this car every six to eight thousand kilometers previous owners definitely didn't do that and the engine is a bit varnished and that's mainly due to long change into oil at the beginning of its life i think 20 25 thousand kilometers maybe even 30 something ridiculous like that just if you have a brand new car, cut that in half. 10,000, 15,000 max if you want, but I wouldn't go more than 10,000. Fan shroud is going back in. Brand new expansion thing. Absolutely nothing wrong with the old one. It was just yellow and ugly, so I wanted to refresh it and make the engine bay look a bit nicer. Original clamps. Now the little covers. Brand new filter. Now we're gonna add the coolant. So set the temperature to the highest setting and the fan to the lowest. This coolant is mixed 50-50 with water. Fan clutch. If you're wondering why am I not replacing this, that's because I already did. All right, now we're gonna start it, let it warm up, see if we have any leaks and if the squeak is gone. The mighty beast. I'll never get tired of this rumble, never. If you're wondering why it sounds like a diesel, every S62 does. Just Vanos and stuff, and this one is all original, never touched. Original timing chain guides, original Vanos, original rod bearings, untouched. They're really, really good engines. So far everything seems fine. Can't see any leaks, but we'll go underneath once we shut it down. Gotta love an E39 M5. You just have to. Have a look-see. The oil pan is now nice and dry. The valve cover was leaking a little bit onto the AC compressor, but that's resolved. Power steering pump and hose is dry. I did have a bit of a leak from the steering box, but that seemed to disappear. So the car is self-healing, which is excellent. The rear main seal, all clean. The gearbox as well. So no current active leaks on this car whatsoever. And I'm loving that. So with that, we can move on to the thrust arms. Currently I have TRW thrust control arms on the car. And while they're not bad, I can feel that the bushings are starting to go. 
I think they're flexing a bit too much and I can feel that when I'm driving because the rubber on those seems softer than the original lm 401s but I want to try something new, something different. These are monoballs from German Auto Solutions from the US, not sponsored or anything like that, bought this with my own dinero. And everybody in E39 community has been praising these, that they completely transformed the way that the car handles. So I want to try them and see what's what. These set me back 350 bucks plus import duty and tax, but that is actually a very good price for a good quality part. So first we're going to press out the bushings from the brand new Lenforda control arms. I want to use Lenforda ball joints. And then there are instructions on German Auto Solution website how to install these. So we're going to follow that and complete this mission. Time to hold the press conference. So first thing we're going to do is use Scotchbrite, a bit of brake cleaner, and clean up the surface of the bushing that we're going to push out. That will be this one. Now we're going to apply some oil. A cup. Very good. We're going to save the bushings in case this ends up being too much for me. Now we're going to clean the surface of the monoballs as well. Now we're going to apply a thin layer of primer and coat the inside of the control arm. Do the same with the monoball. Now we need to give it 15 minutes to cure. Now we're going to apply Loctite all over inside the control arm and also on the monoball. Coat the surface completely. Now we are ready to press in the monoball. Make sure it's pressed all the way. And that's fully seated. Now we're gonna wipe the excess off. Now the cap, bolts. The torque for these bolts is 10 millimeters. And that's the installation done. So what exactly have we done here? We replaced a rubber bushing with a ball joint, rubber flexes, ball joint doesn't, it moves. And that's what's going to give us that precise and tighter steering wheel feel. The downside is a bit more harshness, vibrations and all of that stuff is going to be transferred into the cabin, into the car because rubber absorbs all of that and ball joint doesn't. Everybody says that it's not too bad, you can't really feel it, but we'll see. If it's too harsh for me, then I'm gonna go back to rubber. And that's both of them pressed in. So unbolt the sway bar. It doesn't look bad, it's just it's flexing way too much. And I'm gonna unbolt the sway bar link. Next, we need to remove the pinch bolt, then lower the steering knuckle, and then we can unbolt the ball joint. Now I can get the ball joint tool going. There it is, easy peasy. First up, cleaning. Washer and the brand new nut. Counter hold the ball joint. That should do it. Now I need to employ Hugh Jackman Jr. The strut is back in its position and now we can torque the pinch bolt. Always torque by the nut.
have a brand new bolt here and we need to use spacers here that come with monoballs. Nice, it's through. Brand new nut. Since this is not a rubber bushing, we don't need to fully load the suspension in order to torque it. There's nothing to twist. However, instructions do say to load the suspension somewhat and then torque it in order to take out any slop that's in the hardware here. So I'm gonna do it finger tight for now. Then we're gonna put the wheels back on, lower it, and then I'll do the final torque. The rims are back and thankfully they survived. I asked the guy really nicely to be careful with them and they sure were because they're exactly the same as before. No scratches anywhere. Really happy with that. We have fresh Michelin rubber, so let's put them on. And since this is going to be too much torque for my torque wrench, we're gonna go, well, we're gonna eyeball it and use a breaker bar. So I think twice until the lift, that should do it. Like that. That'll do it. We didn't remove the rear wheels, but while at it, we're gonna recheck the torque. Check the tire pressure. Front's 2.4, rear 2.6 bar. You'd think we'd go for a drive now, but not yet. We gotta do some more preventive maintenance. The fuel pump. As far as I know, we have original fuel pump to this car. I never replaced it. It's not in the service history. So 21 year old fuel pump. It's one of those things that when it dies, it's gonna do so without giving any prior signs. Sometimes if you're lucky, you might get some, but normally it just happens suddenly and it's gonna leave you stranded wherever you are. So we're gonna replace it proactively just to be safe in that department as well. The pump lives where they normally live under the rear seat. I can see some marks on the ring over here, so it was definitely replaced at one point or something was done. We're gonna do it anyway, pull it out, see what's going on, but first we need to clean and vacuum all of this. No, 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 no. Gonna have some fuel here. A lot of it, actually. My professional tool. Fun fact, I'm doing this after the test drive because the fuel tank was full. All right. Carefully take it out. On my other hand, I need to unclip the pump. There it is. Hello, fuel pump. Take this to the table. Here's the fuel pump. Definitely replaced at one point. No idea when, because there's no date on it but the strainer is looking horrible. And I bought OE1 from Peberg. Peberg makes these fuel pumps for BMW. Unfortunately, it's missing two important components, strainer and this plastic hose. It just comes like that. And I definitely want to replace that and that. So I have to send this one back and that's not something you can order separately from the dealer. And I had to buy a whole thing comes with the brand new gasket, comes assembled in the carrier, zip ties and a hose clamp. And now I'm gonna show you what OE and Genuine means. You can see here, this is the pump from Peberg, TI Automotive for Poland makes this fuel pump. And here's the original BMW one, also says TI Automotive on it, except this one doesn't have BMW stamp on it. This one does, right over there says BMW on it. That's the main difference. OE is the exact same part as the original one, minus the BMW stamp. This is 135 euros, original one is 280. Unfortunately, in this case, we gotta go with the original one because we need all of those new parts as well. And I'm gonna send this one back. Oh no, someone welded them on. So whoever replaced this pump previously soldered the connections here. No idea why would it do that, but I gotta try and unsolder them. Ok, 
Okay, there's one. It's the second one off as well. There really is no reason to solder these. If the connection is a bit loose, you just clamp them a little bit more. And that's now firmly installed. Perfect. Need a clamp here. And that's the fuel pump assembly ready to go back in. As you can see, the bottom of the fuel tank looks clean. It's plastic, so no rust or anything like that. Need to clip it in. And now we gotta make sure we do this correctly. There's a notch here that you have to line up. So before I start smacking it on, I'm gonna connect the hose and the connector. Just make sure that the fuel gauge is still working. Yep. Connect it, start the car, make sure we don't have any leaks. It's probably gonna take a bit to build up fuel pressure. Very good. And no leaks. Lovely, job well done. Now the final touch, we're gonna replace the M5 badge on the trunk. If you have worn stripes like I do, you can replace just that. You can buy replacement stickers on eBay, but mine is completely worn, including the chrome, so we're gonna replace this completely. Here are the parts and tools that we need. We're gonna use some tape to mark the position of the badge. Dental floss. That's the easiest way to remove the old badge without damaging the paint. Nice. All right, now I'm gonna get some polish. That's looking pretty perfect. Now some surface prep. Beautifully done. Oh, shit. one job, Stratton. One job. Fire. Do you see what I did? I put the five upside down. All right. All right, I gotta go find more tape. I'm back. Put new tape on the back. Let's do it the right way around now. That's looking proper now. Bit of spit for the exhaust steps. Beautiful. Now we can finally go for a blast down the Autobahn. As always, every single part that I replace on this car goes into a spreadsheet. No matter how small, O-ring, bolt, whatever, goes in here with the part number as well as which part was used. OE, OEM or original, date and kilometers. It just looks nice and tidy. And that's how I keep service records for this car and keep track of my maintenance. Buongiorno, signore and signoritas. Actually, do we have any signoritas watching the channel? My girlfriend says nine. 
let's see how those monoballs feel and if I'm gonna like them stop beeping I need to take it in for wheel alignment let's just go for a quick test drive see if they're gonna stay or not listen to that cold start nothing can beat that rumble right off the bat does it feel any harsher So far, no. Hmm. Harsher. Yep. Let's see if it's worth it. Like the bumps are not nice and smooth anymore. Oh, is that an F90 M5? Wanna race, bro? Huh? Maybe I should just rev it next time, showing you what a proper engine sounds like. It's nice, but you wasted your money should have bought mint one of these so it's only harsh when you hit potholes big surprise there and all the noise and stuff that you're hearing that's just camera and equipment rattling because i don't have a really good solution how to bolt down this camera properly so i'm using a neck stabber here to do that just pull some bolts ah but more composed oh there's the guy with the m5 what are you doing man I'm gonna check the oil level one more time and then get the GoPros in sync. Oil level is spot on, the squirrel is gone. Let's hit it. Sport. Full tank of gas. Let's use it. And this is not 100 limit sign. 100 is the speed limit at night from 10 to 6. I had few people comment that. We're not that crazy people. So good at high speeds this car as far as the monoballs go not feeling much of a difference here we'll see once we get on some e roads and rev matching in this car is so easy much easier than the 60 m5 you got to give it a lot more revs just comparing the suspension to the alpina oh this is so much better because i did complete suspension on this car when i bought it everything Pony yellow shocks, which I do like. They ride really well. The big dislike that I have with them is that they're adjustable. I don't need that. And the front ones are super easy to adjust. You just open the hood, turn the knob, but the rear ones are just pointless design because in order to adjust them, you have to take them out of the car, remove the spring, compress them, and then adjust them. It's just, what's the point? So for Project Skovde, or Hofde, we're gonna go with stock suspension i want to see how they feel how a brand new e39 m5 used to feel back in the day it's a work day too much trafico james may and his sandero this thing has so much torque it's wonderful to drive on the highway and this is 240 and it's by far the quietest car i have at high speed because no stupid sunroof so it's definitely a little bit less floaty than before the front end is more stable but i could have gotten that with some fresh lamforta bushings as well ended up on the same road as i did with alpina but it was nice last time mine is the breakdown and someone pointed out when i said that was the first bmw that left me stranded because of a mechanical breakdown that wasn't a bmw that was alpina 
very good point. My record remains clean. Impreza! than before. This is now a hill climb. It's a good thing a 62 has plenty of torque. So even in third gear, it just pulls at 2000 RPM. You don't get that in the 60 M5. I think I shall overtake you. No, I'm driving, woman. I keep looking out for a strawberry stand. It's strawberry season in Germany. I love strawberries. The way it pulls. Oh, I almost forgot. Last time we did the video on this car, we talked about difficult shifting when the car is cold and getting into the second gear. And we tried, well, I tried like a ton of different fluids over the years, all MTF. But in that video, we tried uh, Liquid Molly MTF with gearbox additive. And that was pretty good for around 500 kilometers. And then it was same difficult cold shifting getting into the second gear really crunchy and difficult once it's fully warmed up it's brilliant so a subscriber wrote me and i was really skeptical in first but he told me try atf and then i thought about it and realized that e31 850i with the six speed which is a very similar transmission to this one uses atf from the factory every single one that i drained fluid out had ATF in it and I always put ATF back in it and the shifting is perfect. So I did the same thing here, straight ATF. And it's been in the car for 7,000 kilometers, eight, something like that. And it's been perfect. Even in cold weather, five degrees, 10 degrees, zero degrees, you start the car and the shifting is perfect from the get go and it stays over thousands and thousands of kilometers. So I can definitely recommend it. If you're skeptical about it like me, just know that the E31 uses the same stuff. The ATF label is on the transmission there from the factory and that's how they filled it. And it's pretty much the same or very similar gearbox to this one. Liquid Molly Top Tech 1100, perfect. Every new GoPro is garbage. I bought the 10, works for like 15 minutes and then it overheats in like 15 degrees. And then this one is now, this is the nine, also keeps giving me an error. This one is from 1998 and it works fine. So to sum up monoballs, tiny bit harsher than before, not as harsh as I initially thought. Definitely you can feel more vibrations and noise and harshness when you hit bigger potholes. But when you drive on normal roads that are bumpy and whatnot, have imperfections, it's more or less the same. In the corners, when I'm pushing the car, I'd say firmer and more precise, but I think I would achieve the same thing if I went with stock Lamforter bushings, because the TRW ones are just too soft for this car. So was it worth it? I'm gonna have to say nine for now. I really had high expectations and that's probably part of it but I don't have that wow effect. I was expecting that I'm gonna feel immediately some difference. On the upside, monoballs are gonna last you a lot longer than rubber bushings. Where's the water? 
No, that's coolant. Here's the Wasser. Back to the Werkstatt. It's silly how quickly it gets up to speed with normal traffic. Again, third time. How do people use GoPros then? So I gotta send that one back as well. Listen to that. No knocking noises. Licht an! Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. E39 M5 still looks and drives gorgeous. The next time you're gonna see it on the channel, it's not gonna be this one, but Project Hovde. Not sure when, because I was planning to work on it now and get it ready for that big E39 M5 meetup in Munich for 50 years of MGBH. But that's not gonna happen because Alpina, that project doesn't wanna end and I can't start another one because we need to take that engine into million pieces as well to do timing chain guides, vanos and the rest of the stuff. So it'll come, just not sure when. Speaking of the big gathering in Munich, it's gonna happen on 16th and 17th July. And we are hoping to have the most E39 M5s on one place. I got goosebumps just saying that. So if you own one of these beautiful cars, you're more than welcome to join. You can find more details on E39 M5 owners groups on Facebook, as well as M5 board. And I'll try to find a picture to post it here as well. It's gonna be like a road trip and we're just, Hope we're gonna have a lot of cars over there and just have a beautiful day overall. I hope you can make it and I'll see you there. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I would appreciate that. And I'm gonna see you in the next one, which is going to be on Alpina B7, Project Chicago. After a lot of ups and downs, we finally have a plan how we're gonna put that car back on the road. And it's an interesting one. So stay tuned for that. Ciao.